Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's Nina. It is a ripe Monday morning and it's overcast, cloudy outside. And I just thought that I would take you guys through the behind the scenes of how I create my guitar tutorial videos from the moment I wake up until the moment I post the video and everything that goes behind all these videos that I post every week because it's more than you think. Maybe some of you are just curious about my process. Maybe some of you have your own YouTube channels that you post covers on or music videos or something like that. You want some tips for how to make your videos better or something like that? I don't know. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys my full process. Okay, so you're on my tripod now. As you can see, there's light coming from this way. I always turn on my ring light and face it towards the wall whenever I'm filming anything because it just like brightens up my whole room. If I have it facing me, it's like too bright. This is perfect. You can change the dimness, you can make it brighter. And as always guys, all of my gear is always linked down below in my description box in case you guys are curious about what camera I use, microphone, lighting, all of that kind of stuff I leave down below because whenever I watch somebody's video, I'm like, oh, their quality is really good or I really like the sound of their audio. I wonder what microphone they're using. I always go to their description box and see if they have it linked there. So maybe I want to get one for myself. And all of my guitar gear is also always down below because I literally always get comments about what gear I use, my guitar, where is it from, all that kind of stuff. The first thing I do before I make a guitar tutorial or I think about filming it or anything is I come up with which song I'm going to teach. Most of the time I have this list so that I just choose a song from, but recently I've been branching out into other artists, what music I am currently listening to that I think you guys would want to learn. And I came up with it like right before I went to sleep, I decided that I was going to teach a song from Gracie Abrams last night before I went to bed, listened to the song, got the chords down, and now this morning the first thing I'm gonna do is create the tab for the song because I always have the tab next to me when I am teaching the tutorial just so I have it to refer to, make sure I'm on the right track, and also I have such a hard time remembering lyrics. I really have to commit lyrics to memory because when I'm in like a performing setting, for some reason the lyrics just go out the window and I can't remember them so having them in front of me is very helpful so basically what I'll do is I'll I'll copy and paste the lyrics into a Google Doc and then I will go line by line and add the chords above each word sometimes this takes longer if it's a more complicated song this song is a good one because it's short and it also has the same four chords for the whole song so I love that once I've kind of grammar checked the lyrics made sure all the chords are in the order that's when I will move on on to the next thing which is to get myself camera ready so I'm gonna go do that right now okay we're ready to go so the first thing that I grab is the tripod I just took it off the tripod but I put this right here in front of my bed also I will take this blanket off because it kind of messes with the background colors and so I like to have it just be like all white you have to think about these things because I put text on my screen and I need there to be enough white blank space for me to write the chords and everything on the screen so that it's not too like busy in the background. The next thing I will do is take my stool here and I put it next to my tripod for me to put my computer on. So we have the tripod and the stool and then my computer just like that so that I can have the tab right there while I'm looking at the camera and I don't have to look down or like too far away from the lens. And of course I gotta turn on the twinkly lights. Come on. There we go. I just like to have these in the background for just aesthetic purposes. I have like a frame in my mind of how it should be. It should be like halfway down this plant, like this much over the frame. Like I need to make sure this this space is like good to go and then I choose which guitar I'm gonna use based on the outfit that I chose and also just like the vibes of the song so we're going with a white shirt and the basic tailor today first I will tune my guitar to make sure it's all good to go so I'm not out of tune when I'm teaching 
said, I am teaching I Miss You, I'm Sorry by Gracie Abrams. So I'll go to Spotify, pull up the song just so that I have it in case I have to listen to it. And then I will screenshot while I'm here the Spotify code so I can pop it into the video when I go to edit just so that I have it here now This song is pretty short So I'm not expecting it to be a very long video that I'm filming so I'm excited about that But sometimes if it's a song that needs much more preparation I will do I will practice it way more days in advance so that the video filming goes smoothly because sometimes I get caught up in my words trying to explain something and then I'm like oh, I just start over and then it makes editing really difficult but usually if it's a shorter song, it makes it easier to edit and just get straight to the point here. Okay, I can't obviously like film a behind the scenes because I need this camera to film, but I will try to film some on my phone. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Nina. A minor. E minor. And F. You said forever in the end of See you guys in the next one. Bye. Woo! Y'all, I think that's the fastest tutorial I have ever filmed. Thumbnail time. Take off the Apple Watch. Oh, but we have this wonderful tan that I need to fix. When I'm taking a thumbnail photo, I have to think about what I have done in my recent thumbnails. I have to make sure I'm not doing too many looking down, not too many looking at the camera. Really like the smallest things that honestly don't matter that much, but I don't like all of my thumbnails to look the same, I like to switch it up a little bit. Okay, now it's time for the play along video. And I think you guys would be surprised at how long it actually takes me to film these sometimes because depending on how Recently the song came out. I'm having trouble memorizing the lyrics, but I always try my very best to not have a bunch of cuts But you know, it's a time thing I don't have like hours and hours to keep redoing it until I can play it all the way through So I have no problem just trying to like cut two clips together and honestly most of the time you can't even tell We're gonna do the play along video now Sudden, you stick to your, you stick to your stomach What? I'm telling you guys, this is like the hardest part to get through. So basically it's time for breakdown. Basically I'll just like put everything back to where it is. I usually immediately transfer the files because I don't want to lose them. On the SD card here, I wanted to show you guys my whole process of importing. So now I will plug in my external hard drive right here. And now I'm going to plug in my SD card here. So what I'll do is transfer all of the files over to this folder. So I have all the master copies of them and I keep all of my master files. I have a four terabyte. I think my I think my hard drive is a four terabyte. So I keep everything. I never delete anything. The only thing I delete is the clips off of the SD cards once I've downloaded them onto the hard drive and I've uploaded that video after I've edited it. Once the video goes live, then I will come back and delete the clips off of here just in case something goes wrong with the video before it goes live. I can always re-download them from my SD cards but that is like the whole behind the scenes of creating the content and filming it. I am not going to start editing this right now because I have other stuff that I have to do today, but I will see you guys back when I start the editing process and we'll go through that together. All right guys, it is the next day and I am now ready to edit my video. I don't really have a designated filming day and a designated editing day. I just kind of like do both of them all the time because I just like to have that switch up in routine. But today I'm gonna show you guys a quick little tutorial about how I edit. I'm not gonna go into super detail because obviously I'm not any expert on editing or Final Cut Pro or anything like that. But some of you have asked me before like what editing software do I use? Like how do I do my edits and stuff? So I'm just gonna show you basically how I create my guitar tutorials, just like the bare bones of it because I've been doing it for so long now that it's just second nature. It takes me only a couple hours 
hours sometimes to edit videos. First, I have my new MacBook Pro that I got myself this year, and I always edit on an external hard drive. If you don't have one of these and you want to edit videos, you need to get one because there is not enough storage space on your computer to hold all of your files and everything. I always keep all the raw files and video clips on here, and also my Final Cut Pro library is on here. If you need to switch devices, it's not on your computer, it's on here, so then you can plug it into a different computer that has Final Cut and be able to edit. So it's just much better with storage and just like accessibility to your files and everything. And I really like this one because it's like got the silicone around it, protects it. This one I think is four terabytes, so this will last me like half a year and then I'll have to get a new one, but that's what I use. So I just plug that in. Okay, so here we are in my Final Cut Pro here. I have my last project that I did open, which was Cornelius Street. And so when I want to do a new tutorial, I'm gonna go to new event, and then I'm gonna type in the name of the song and the artist. So we're doing the Gracie Abrams song. Press okay, that'll create a new event on this hard drive. And then immediately I create another project and this is where I'm gonna do my play along video. If you don't know, I post two videos every time I do a tutorial. I will post the main tutorial on my main channel and then I will post a full length demo play along of the song on my Nina Shelby music channel because if I sing too much of the song on my main channel the video will get demonetized which means YouTube will split my revenue in half with the artist you know to some extent I agree the artist it's their song so they should get the revenue if you are covering their song but the fact that I'm just you know teaching a guitar tutorial I don't want to lose out on all of my revenue so that is why I created my other channel where I do not get like any revenue from that channel because most of my videos get half monetized so I create these these two projects at once so that I can work on them at the same time. So then I go up here to the import button and I go through all of my things here. We go to guitar tutorials and then I have all of my artists on here and then I click that folder and then we're going to input that into this event and there we go. I will just add all of the videos in to the main video project right here. And I always put the thumbnail video last. I take a video in order to get a thumbnail. It's always going to be like the right dimensions for me to just screen grab and to put that into my thumbnail. I always edit the play along video first because that helps me create the tutorial faster because in my play along videos I will put the chords and the strum on the screen and so if I have that for the entire song all the way through when I am editing the main video the tutorial I can just copy and paste those overlays over to the main video so I'm just gonna go through this video and cut through it really quickly Okay, so I finished the initial cut through of the play along video and now I'm gonna go through the play along video and add the overlays of the strumming and the chords. So what I'll do is I'll go to titles and then I'll go down to custom and I add that right there. And the first thing I'm gonna do, intro, and then I'm gonna write the chords. And then I liked this font for some reason. I just like how it looks. So I will drag it to the side here. Guys, it's actually so much more simple than you you think it is and I'll just make it a little bit bigger there you go and then I'll just drag that out and then on top of that I will drag another one and this is gonna be the strumming then I will do the strumming and just place that right on top there then we got I play it back here just make sure it looks good and then if something's a little off I'll move it when it goes into the verse I will just go here and I will cut those drag them out again, and then I will change this to verse, and I think it's only twice, I'll add that. It's so simple guys, this is just, this part doesn't take me that long at all. So then I'm just gonna go through and do the rest of the song.
Okay, so I just finished putting the cords over the play along video. That took me like less than five minutes to do because this song is super easy. Sometimes it takes me longer. Then we will move on to starting the basic edit for the main video. The first thing I do is go through the thumbnail photo and try to find one that I like. So that one's a good one. I will just say control command four on a Mac to get the little screen grab thingy. It's just like second nature to me now, so I don't even remember. Okay, that one's a good one. Oh, sh <laughs> shoot. Ah, uh, that wasn't it. Where did it go? Oh, what did I do? It's not what I wanted. What am I even doing? There, okay, it's shift command four. See, it's so unconscious that when I had to think about it, I could not even get it right. I like to take like at least four different options. Okay, so once I've got my thumbnails, just honestly, it's so weird the way I edit because I will, since I'm already at the end of the video, that's where I start. So I will go to my most recent guitar tutorial. So that would be Cornelia Street. I'd scroll all the way back and then I'd grab this little effect that I do to kind of mimic like bloopers or it has that little beep sound where it sounds like this, kind of like that. So I add the little blooper sound effect and then I'll go back and I'll grab my end screen here and then I'll just put it at the end and I got like my little outro song so I'll go through those bloopers and see if I like them enough. So then it looks like this when I end. Bye. Beep. Okay, let's try this again. The bloopers come in there. And then I will just go through and every single, honestly, sometimes I don't have to like listen to a clip to cut stuff because you can see the little spaces between right here. I just cut those out. That's like, you know, in between me talking or when I take a breath or something, I will just cut those out immediately. Let's go back to Cornelia Street and then I have my like button and I have my subscribe button that I always just copy and paste whatever video I am doing. Doing. So basically that's what I do at the end of my videos. Now at the beginning of my videos I always put a demo of the play along video. So what I will do is I will literally just copy and paste the whole play along into the beginning of my video. I'll go to Cornelia Street again. I will copy and paste my intro here that I created with all of my music and sound effects and I will just copy and paste. And so once you have most of the stuff established you can just copy and paste and it makes it so much less work. I will just change this title to the song that I am teaching. What I will do is go through the demo and cut out like basically I start with the first verse and then I will just do a clip of the chorus usually then I will just you know that'll be like my little teaser for what's to come and what parts I am teaching and then we begin. Honestly this is it's like I said a ton of copying and pasting. Hello guys welcome back to the channel. It's, it's Nina. I put in my bottle cork sound effect right here and then I have this graphic that I created on Canva that looks like the Instagram tag thing. If you guys want to know more about how I create my little graphics let me know because it's actually so much easier than you would think but yes I add in my little pop-up Instagram thing and then I just literally downloaded this subscribe button overlay from I think I found it on YouTube somewhere and then I will introduce the song that I am teaching again do the bottle cork effect and then I add in on the top of it this Spotify code so if people haven't heard of the song they could just scan it on their phone and listen to it Okay, so getting into the main tutorial, I always add in this slide effect, this transition right here between like the intro and then the actual tutorial. I'll just add in that slide effect. And then I have this sound effect that's kind of like a wishing sound. I don't know. It just goes with the transition. But yeah, let's get into it. Swish. Okay, so the version of the... And then we get into the tutorial. So initially I will add in some text because I always go over the chords first. So I type chords needed and then I will put the chords that you need to play this song with and I will change the font, put it up, throw it up there in the white space. So then I will go to my event here and then I will pull up my documents, go to main channel. I have all of my chord charts in my hard drive so that I can 
put them in there. So I got C and A minor, drop those in, E minor, and then I have F, and I think I will add F sus too in there just in case. So what I will do is I have this kind of like a preset on here that I created, but it's honestly, I just drag and drop uh, this C chord, I just know that's the first chord, you see how it shows up like all big and stuff. Usually you just go to the transform thing, make it small, put it in the corner here, but since I want them all to be the same size, I already created this little like preset here, so I will just drag and drop that. And then what you can do now is just copy, so I command C, copy C, and I can copy the format, so then when I drag in A, I can just go option command V, which is paste. So I just pasted the format of C to A minor, which I love that tool, I use it all the time. We go to E minor, do the same thing, copy and paste that, and then I drag and drop F, and then we do that again. So that's how I add the chords in here. I just like think it's really important for the chord charts to be included when you're learning guitar, because sometimes I show them at the beginning and then they disappear for the rest of the song and you have to keep going back to the beginning of the video to check the chord charts if you are a beginner and still don't have them memorized. So what I like to do is just like always have them on the screen when I'm playing the chord. And it is a ton of work work to keep copying and pasting these chord charts, especially at the time I'm playing them, but I think it's worth it. I think it helps you guys a lot. And so now that we have the intro and the outro of the video ready to go, all that's left is the actual tutorial in the middle. And so what I will do, sometimes I'll just go through and cut through the whole thing and just cut out all the parts that I don't need, all the times I messed up, all the pauses and stuff like that. And then I will add the overlays, but sometimes if I'm running low on on time, I will just do the cut through and adding the overlays at the same time. And when I say overlay, I just mean like, you know, like putting the chords on the screen and all of that kind of stuff. Just the extra layers to it, I guess. So I'm just going to show you guys how I do this. So I go to the play along, copy the intro and the strumming. I'll just copy that. And then I just put it here. And there's the intro as I'm talking about it. And just like we did with the chords needed over here. I'm just going to go back, literally copy the C and then paste it wherever I start playing it. So I think it's like right here. So I'll just drag this all the way out. I will paste the C chord and then when I switch chords, I will drop that in there. I will bring an A down copy and paste that. And you guys can see how this would be very tedious to keep dragging, dropping, and cutting the chord charts as I'm playing them. But like I said, I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> it actually goes so much faster because I basically go on autopilot now when I'm editing my tutorials. Essentially, I just do this for every single part of the song, intro, verse, chorus, and these are just like the main elements I use, just this text overlay and then my chords. And the chords are graphics that I created myself specifically for my YouTube videos and for my chord charts that I put on my tabs. But yeah, I'll check back in with you guys once I'm finished editing. Okay, it is the next day. Now, usually videos do not take me three days to edit, get to all the way to scheduling, but because I'm filming the process, it's taking a little bit longer. So I just wanted to show you guys. So yesterday I finished the whole edit process. Okay, so you can see here that I have finished editing the whole play along. I've got all of my overlays up here with the chords, strumming. Now I'm gonna go over to the main tutorial. This one is also finished editing. It's on the shorter end at eight minutes. So once I've watched through this, usually I watch through the main video like twice through. Then I do timestamps. So I go through the entire video and type out the timestamps for intro, verse, chorus, bridge, just because I know some people are there for a certain and reason I don't want to waste your time so you can go down and click to the part that you want to learn once I have all of this stuff done I will go up to this corner here and just export it as a 1080p next and then I'm going to save it into my hard drive here in my finished videos so since I don't have one for Gracie I'm creating a new folder and then I'm just gonna click save in there and then then I'm gonna export the videos and then we're gonna talk about uploading them to YouTube so while the video 
videos exporting, I thought I'd just show you really quick how I make my thumbnails. I have Canva Pro. I am subscribed to them, so I pay a monthly fee to have all of their features, but it is so worth it because I use it literally every day. And then I edit those screenshots in my Lightroom app, which is like Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. And I have presets that I've bought from people and I kind of adjust from there. So I like to make it like white and bright is like my thumbnail aesthetic here. I always add a picture of the album or the artist because I just think seeing the artist makes people want to click on it more because I think I'll, that's kind of what sets my thumbnails apart because not always do other tutorials have pictures of the artist or the album. Like me, I'm a visual person so if I see that I'm like oh draws my eye and then I always put the name of the song and that it's a guitar tutorial and then this is where I just like kind of have fun. I put little graphics so on this one I have like a broken heart. This font for her aesthetic is just a little bit more simplistic and then for I'll show you guys another one of my thumbnails. Recently I did Cornelia Street and I had a lot of fun with this one. I put a picture of Taylor Swift playing it live so people would know this is the acoustic version that she sang live at the City of Lover and then I also put a little street life and some hearts. That just like kind of adds to like the cute aesthetic of it so that when you go to my channel I have just like all of these very thought out cute thumbnails that all go together. Oh and here's another thing that I have to do when I am posting a video. I have a website if you didn't know. This is where I post all of my guitar tabs. So once I have that Google Doc done all good I will save it as a PDF and then I will go to my Squarespace website here and as you can see I have like all of my tabs on here but essentially what I do is I you know write the name of the song and then I will hyperlink the PDF download into this blog post here where it says here I have a hyperlink if you click on that I, I can do that actually right now it'll take you to this PDF of the tab and then you could just download it yourself which is great that I can you know provide that for everybody and it's free and then I will schedule this to go live at the same time as the video is going live so you can see there's just so many little pieces that come together to make these videos you know I post them like twice a week while the video is exporting I am scheduling the tabs to go live I am making the thumbnail and usually by the end of it then the video is ready to go live so that I will upload it write the description and the title and usually I do that beforehand and I always have a part of my description box that is just like copy and paste ready to go and then I have the beginning of it which varies per song and also like my tags keywords all of that good stuff I actually haven't talked a lot about keywords or anything like that here is my notes doc don't know why I decided to write all of my descriptions in the notes app of my computer but I did it's actually just so much easier to click back and forth between all of my titles so you can see on the side here I have all of them here so I can just go back and forth and copy and paste you know I think a lot about what people are searching for so I type in a searchable title that's Gracie Abrams I miss you I'm sorry guitar tutorial and then I usually just type a little something about the song you know how I heard it just like whatever I want to really about the song and then I copy and paste most of the rest of this I got the rest of my channels social media my camera stuff tools that I use I always have this stuff at the bottom disclaimer performed by Gracie Abrams in case someone wants to sue me and then you always need a disclaimer if you're using affiliate links which means if you click the links in my description box I will receive a small commission if you buy something from them I always like to include my subscriber count because it's really cool to go back and look at my videos and see how many subscribers I had at that time okay now it's time to upload and schedule this video video finally okay so we have my file we're just going to upload that so this is what it's gonna look like when you're uploading a video I will then copy and paste the title and description into it and then I will upload the thumbnail so I'll go to downloads click on that thumbnail another thing I like to do I always add it to my guitar tutorials playlist which is a million miles long if it's an artist I see myself making multiple videos for then I will create their own playlist for them I like Gracie and I probably will teach more of her songs and then we'll scroll down to keywords then I will copy and paste those in there and so basically I will wait for this to upload and then the last thing that's left to do is schedule it and I am scheduling it for Friday at 8 a.m. 
I always do 8 a.m. Tuesday and Friday. Just save that. And then it's just, you know, it goes through checks to make sure there's no copyright stuff. And then you'll get an email if it is. And then I have to go fix that and re-upload. But anyways, that is basically how I upload all my videos and do all that kind of stuff. Once this is uploaded, then I will do the same exact thing with the play along video and just change a few things. But yeah, there's a lot of different things that go into making my videos. And I just wanted to give you guys a little behind the scenes video even if you know you're not a youtuber yourself or don't plan on like posting videos or anything like that I just thought it'd be fun to show you guys behind the scenes if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know if you guys want any more like behind the scenes type of content or anything like that thank you guys for being here and I will see you guys in the next video bye